Begin by removing the fasteners and the cover from the battery box. Place the battery into the battery box and position the positive terminal to the left side of the battery box. Using the supplied hardware, tighten the fasteners and secure the battery. Uncoil the Thermal King battery cables and fuel lines. Place the fuel lines and the two wire fuel pump harness aside for later use. Identify the two gauge and the eight gauge positive cables. Apply split loom and feed them down between the battery box and the chassis frame. Then loop them around to enter through the right side of the battery box. Measure and cut both positive cables to length. Leave the eight gauge cable three inches longer than the two gauge cable. Identify the two gauge negative cable. Apply split loom and feed the cable down between the battery box and the chassis frame. Then loop it around to enter through the left side of the battery box. Measure and cut the two gauge negative cable to length. Crimp battery lugs onto each of the two gauge cables. Add a heat shrink and crimp the inline fuse holder to the 8 gauge cable. Cover both battery lugs with heat shrinks and apply heat. Use caution not to burn your heat shrinks or other wires. Apply split loom on the 8 gauge inline fuse holder and any remaining unprotected cabling. Connect the 2 gauge and 8 gauge positive cables to the positive battery terminal. Connect the 2 gauge negative cable to the negative battery terminal. Apply battery terminal protector to both the positive and negative battery terminals. Replace the battery box cover and replace and tighten the four fasteners. Leave six inches free and coil and secure the fuel pump wiring. Drill a 732nds hole seven inches from the outside of the battery box and into the channel in the subfloor. Fasten the fuel pump and bracket to the subfloor. Connect the male and female two-wire fuel pump harness connectors and secure the wiring to the subfloor. Remove the tank plug nuts from the top of the rear Thermal King fuel tank. Apply Teflon tape to the two fuel line compression fitting elbows. Thread the fittings by hand to start and use a wrench to finish. They should both be positioned towards the chassis frame when secured. String out the fuel lines and drain them of any remaining fuel. Note that when installed correctly, all fuel lines should make long sweeping turns to avoid flow restrictions. Using the fuel line with arrows pointing to the Thermal King unit, measure and cut the line to length. Place the fuel line into the top compression fitting of the fuel pump. Use the fuel line you cut off in the previous step to connect to the bottom compression fitting of the fuel pump. Measure to the front fitting on the fuel tank and cut to length. The arrow should point to the fuel pump. Connect the fuel line to the front compression fitting on the fuel tank. Measure and cut the last remaining fuel line to connect to the rear fitting on the fuel tank. The arrows on the fuel line should point to the fuel tank. Carefully tighten the four compression fittings. Inspect the fuel lines to be sure there are no kinks. Cover all the fuel lines with split loom and neatly secure them with cable ties.
Loosen the fasteners and swing open the street side access door on the Thermal King unit. Remove the bag containing the cab controller and also the green identification card. Place the ID card and cab controller on the floor inside the chassis cab. Uncoil the cab controller cable and feed it under the dash and over the steering column. Remove the panel below the Diamond Logic rocker switches and feed the cab controller through the opening from behind the dash. Leave 12 inches free and coil up and secure the cab controller cable. Carefully place the cable into the dash opening and install the cab controller bracket. Use a screwdriver to push in the tabs on the bottom and top of the cab controller bracket to hold it in place. Mate the cab controller cable connector to the back of the cab controller. The pins can easily be damaged if caution is not used. Slide the cab controller into the cab controller bracket until it locks into place. Secure the cab controller cable under the dash. Open up the boxes containing the wireless door switches, magnets, fasteners, wire caps, splices, coordinator module, and interconnect harness. Prepare the interconnect harness by separating out and attaching a terminal splice cap to each of the wires labeled FI1, FI2, FLR, FLS, DS2, and DS3. Move the antenna cable and then attach the GND ring terminal to the CH ground stud J23 on the controller board. Attach the VIN ring terminal to 2A J25 on the controller board. Disconnect the J7 connector from the bottom right of the controller board. Cut the wires labeled DS and DSP 4 inches below the J7 connector. Splice together the single wire labeled DS from the J7 connector and the wire labeled DS1 from the interconnect harness. Splice together the wire labeled RS from the interconnect harness to both cut wires labeled DSP. Attach a terminal splice cap to the end of the unused DS wire. Apply heat and reconnect the J7 connector to the controller board. Attach the bottom of the control module with a cable tie and plug in the interconnect harness. Attach the antenna cable to the coordinator module. Verify the red power LED is lit and press and release the switch on the module until the desired yellow zone Z1 LED is lit. Press and hold the switch again until the green pairing LED is lit. With the red, yellow, and green LEDs lit, bring the door switch and magnet together quickly two times. The LED on the door switch will flash yellow four times, then green. Bring the door switch and magnet together again three times within 10 seconds. The green LED on the door switch will turn off and the pairing and door switch LED will flash slowly when paired successfully. Repeat using different zones for additional door switches. Close and secure all the fasteners on the Thermal King access door. Install the magnet and door switch at the rear door. Install the magnet and door switch at the side door. Test the LED light functions of the door switch when the magnet is absent and again when the magnet is present. 
power on the Thermal King unit using the in-cab controller. The unit will start and run, however if a door is opened, the unit will shut down and the in-cab controller will indicate door on the display. Once all doors have been closed, the unit will again start and run.